Hello there and welcome to this video which is designed to help you with your Year 9 Earthquake Comparison. Now over the course of the last couple of lessons what we've been doing is looking at two different earthquake events and we're starting to draw out some comparisons but also some differences between the two because quite importantly this is going to build into an assessment that you're going to be sitting next week in your geography lessons. Now there are two key words that we need to take into consideration. Firstly, there's evaluation. So looking at the differences between the two and trying to work out which one has the biggest or the worst impacts, but also a comparison because there are two th or there are things that are very very similar about these two earthquake events and there are things that are very very different about these earthquake events. Now the earthquakes that we're going to be comparing as you've probably guessed are the earthquakes of Haiti and San Francisco. Now I've handed you all out a sheet which is a comparison grid that you need to be filling out whilst we're going through and watching this video. Now the good thing about this video is you can pause it, you can rewind it and you can stop it at any time to try and add any information into your grid that you might need. Now whenever we're looking at these events we tend to think of them as causes, effects and responses. In terms of the causes, for both of these earthquakes they occurred at conservative plate boundaries. So this means that we've got two pieces of crust that are sliding past each other and sometimes this is called a slip fault. Occasionally those pieces of crust lock together and pressure builds up and sometimes this pressure is released in the form of seismic waves. And you should remember correctly that we've got P waves, L waves and S waves. Now in terms of the epicenters for both of these earthquakes, they were both in really, really densely populated areas. In Haiti, it happened in the uh, nation's capital of Port-au-Prince, and in San Francisco, in a really, really densely populated San Francisco Bay. In terms of how these both measured, um, the US Geological Survey, or the USGS, recognises that Haiti was a 7.0 on the Richter scale, in comparison to San Francisco's 7.1 on the Richter scale. They both are classed as measuring 9 on the Macaulay scale, and we'll explore that a little bit later. Now you should remember rightly the differences between the Richter scale and the Macaulay scale. Remember our Richter scale is our more scientific measure that's measured used in a seismograph, whereas our Macaulay scale is based on observations but gives us a better indication as to the damage that's caused at that particular earthquake event. Now we need to start thinking about the impacts and we need to start thinking about the effects. Now in Haiti, tragically, um, the latest figures show that over 300,000 people died. Now that doesn't just include people that died as a direct result of the earthquake, this is also as a result of some of the after effects which we're going to explore a little bit later. By comparison, the number of deaths in San Francisco was 63 people. In terms of the economic cost, there's also a big difference. In Haiti, the economic cost is, um, is estimated to be around 14 billion US dollars. And in San Francisco, it's estimated to have been around 6 to 8 billion US dollars. Now, there's a few things that we need to take into consideration. Firstly, the San Francisco earthquake happened um, quite a while ago in 1989, whereas the Haiti earthquake is more recent in 2010. We also need to take into consideration the gross domestic product or the GDP of each of these two different countries. And you should have some statistics in your books which show the GDP per capita of Haiti and the GDP per capita of San Francisco so that we can start to make a good economic comparison between these two particular locations. Now I'm not going to give you all of the effects but I could summarise it in saying that a lot of the effects affected people particularly in the Haiti earthquake. We call these social effects and lots of these effects became secondary effects that weren't a direct result of the um, earthquake itself but were kind of these knock-on effects or these so what effects that we think about. In San Francisco, you could claim that a lot of the effects were perhaps a bit more economic and a little bit easier to sort out, so the response was very much in the short term as it required money. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to pause this video because I'm not going to tell you what all of the impacts and all of the effects are. I want you to do a bit of internet research. Now, you should also have some um, information in your books from previous lessons that you can use to help you fill out some of those different effects that are um, attributed to each of these different earthquakes. Now remember, when we classify in some of these effects, we always use short term and long term, or we use social, economic and environmental. And you need to be using those different categories in order to get the highest levels that you possibly can when it comes to your assessment. Now we also need to think about the responses. Okay, and this is how they dealt with the earthquake after the event happened. Now I've put Haiti as more of an international effort and a more of an international response. 
Aid agencies were heavily involved in the response in Haiti, primarily because it was an LEDC, a less economically developed country, so it struggled to come to the responses on its own. San Francisco, I've put a question mark, maybe their responses were regional. Maybe America and the USA and California could sort out some of those responses using the money that they've got available to them in a much, much easier way than the responses of Haiti. Now, I want you to pause this video once again. And I want you to start thinking about some of these responses. I want you again to do a little bit of internet research and I also want you to think about the information that you've got in your book to kind of summarise some of these responses so that we can start to draw a good comparison between the two. A question for you. I said that they both measured 9 on the Macaulay scale, but when you look at some of the impacts and when you look at some of the damage, you have to kind of ask yourself as to whether or not Haiti could have measured higher on the Macaulay scale than it did, despite the fact that both earthquakes measured, six, uh, measured 7 on the Richter scale. Now remember, the intensity or the shallowness of the quake might also have an impact upon the damage that was caused. Finally, a few final words to remember. San Francisco is not a country, and I know you guys know this, but I'm just double checking because it's really frustrating sometimes when people get these basic errors in geography. And remember that Haiti is not a city. It is in fact a country. And remember it's an island and it shares its landmass um, with another country, um, the Dominican Republic. If you've got any questions, tweet us at Geography Department and we can help you out, or send us an email and we'll try and give you the best support that you possibly can. Good luck.